So remember when Angela Merkel said that Europe might have to go it alone? Well, she was joined by GE CEO Jeff Immelt, who tweeted this last night. Disappointed with today's decision on the Paris Agreement, climate change is real. Industry must now lead and not depend on government. Now, you know, I think both of them sort of met those comments as threats, but wouldn't it be great if taxpayers stopped subsidizing nations and businesses? Here to discuss, Kristen Soltis Anderson. Peter Marisi is back along with Matt Welsh. Uh, Kristen, let me, let me ask you, uh, okay, I, you know, when they both make those comments, I kind of say to myself, okay, you go it alone and taxpayers, we get to keep our money. Look, it would be great for industry to take the lead on addressing issues with the environment. I'm somebody that thinks that markets are great for solving problems. This doesn't mean I think that there's no role for government. I think especially on the issue of the environment, dealing with externalities when I do something that causes harm to something else, that government has a role to step in there. But that's very different from massive subsidies for industries and things like that. And so to the extent that we can have some kind of a framework that uh, protects the environment but lets markets do what they do and encourage companies to innovate on their own and it's industry leading the way I, I think that's a good thing you know Matt uh, of course uh, Angela Merkel you know just upset about the the whole G7 NATO meeting and you know the, the rumor that maybe the, they'll create their own army or armed forces I think that's music to the ears of American taxpayers and we just came from eight years of, of government picking winners and losers subsidizing overwhelmingly these big projects like three two three billion dollar solar farms that ended up with ten permanent employees and don't work while punishing businesses they didn't like like coal Angela Merkel right we've been uh, helping guarantee the peace and security of Western Europe for the last 70 years and rightfully so it's been a wonderful project uh, it's amazing to watch the political class absolutely freak out because she made these comments about how we can't completely rely on the US to depend on our future and our fate well you know what that sounds kind of good Donald Trump might have kind of blundered his way into that he might have said silly things about the trade deficit with Germany which I think are silly however Germany should be doing this Emmanuel Macron should be the guy standing up to Vladimir Putin more than Donald Trump is and you're absolutely right we should not be picking winners and losers the way to get cleaner and this is well observed trend anywhere with the environment is to get richer richer countries uh, pollute less right now we're kind of on target to go through and get to those uh, levels of the, of the Paris Agreement that Barack Obama promised because of fracking which you talked about earlier in the right. show so don't do things that let you get less rich well, Peter, we've spent trillions of dollars uh, saving the world, uh, particularly protecting and saving Europe a couple of times. Uh, you know, they can't pay 2%. I don't know how they're going to raise the money for their own army, but certainly to me, again, it sounds like music to the ears of American taxpayers that all of these people are all of a sudden indignant over the fact that they can't give President Trump to put their agenda before America's. There's a strong relationship between Germany not spending enough on defense and it's huge trade surplus. Trump was right about that. And I've got support on that issue from Democratic, moderate Democratic economists, not people that were associated with Clinton. And there are a number of studies that are coming out that that's a problem. And requiring them to spend more is good news. It is absolutely absurd that we should be guaranteeing German security with our money and the lives of our young people when they will not go in harm's way and they spend half as much as we do as a share of their gross national product. You know, this is great. I think what Angela Merkel was saying were things to try to motivate the, 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 the voters in Germany because she has been inclined to move in that direction and has received political resistance. So all of this is good. I view Donald Trump's trip to the Middle East and Europe as a great success. He motivated people to do a lot of very positive things. We don't have time to go through them all sure, now, sure. but I, we, he certainly did and this is one of them. Chris, uh, I do want to ask, uh, Elon Musk, one of the guys uh, who quit the advisory board, also an extraordinary recipient uh, of taxpayer subsidies for all of his businesses. He flies around in one of the most beautiful private jets you can imagine. Do you really think he's going to walk away from any of those freebies from the government? <laughs> Well, I mean, look, I'm, I would love for everybody in America to be able to drive a, a car that doesn't emit a ton of, of carbon. That would be great. But I don't want the government to bankrupt itself trying to subsidize things so that companies can get rich off of those subsidies in the process of doing it. So, you know, I've, I, look, if, if Elon Musk wants to quit the president's council, I, I'm fascinated that this pulling out of the Paris Agreement, which was sort of it didn't have that much teeth to it in the first place, that this is the red line that's making a lot of these CEOs walk from the away from the president seems perplexing to me for sure. Yeah, certainly that means they already have one foot out the door.